Yep. All right, 50 50. 50 50. Let's roll it out. You got, I'll let you go first. All right, so 50 50, right? We throw out a couple, we throw out a uh, topic, uh, something that happened or it's going to happen. And the other person will decide if uh, play on, right? There's no foul, it's good to go. Or um, he sends it to the bar, right? We send it to the bar and we've seen the bar make huge disasters this week. So we'll send it to the bar and they could just kind of like a toss up. I don't know, IDK. And then red card or, you know, no, thank you. That's not a good. So, yeah, my first topic um, is, uh, you know, I was going to go with this one. I was going to let you go first. But what do you think about, you know, Boca, you know, reacting the way they did, trash in the locker room, Marcos Rojo uh, <laughs> had a fire extinguisher. I mean, what are your thoughts on that? Talking about Mexico going to that kind of tournament. I mean, what is going on with that? Well, I mean, number one, VAR in South America is horrible. Like, I thought VAR in Coca-Cola isn't good, but VAR in Coca-Cola is atrocious. Like, like, what are they doing? You know what I mean? It's just, it's so just, just gives you like such a dirty taste in your mouth when you see what's going on. But you're right. This isn't the first time. This isn't the second time Boca has done or has reacted in a certain way. I remember against River, they got disqualified. Because they pat because they pepper sprayed the fans, pepper sprayed the river players through the tunnel. You know yeah, the, little, the little like the little gate that was crazy, yeah. man. Yeah, that so, was crazy. I mean, it's sad that it continues to happen in the, in this regard, and it kind of shows you the balance between passion and just like stupidity. You know, because I mean? you know, Argentines love to tell you, you know, how much passion they have and all this stuff and all, but there's a line and. They, I t- they've crossed the line. They're perpetual line crossers. You know yeah. what I mean? You know, this is we're talking about a league that doesn't have the best reputation. You, um, they go, they we just a couple of years removed from the uh atrocious uh Libertadores finals where they had couldn't even play the fi- the second leg uh of it between River and Boca. Um, <laughs> they had to play in drama, they had to play in Santiago yeah. Bernabeu. <laughs> That's yeah. I forgot about that situation. I'm going back to before those days. You were going like 2004. I'm, yeah, I'm going back, so things haven't changed in 15 years, you know. Yeah, so I mean, they're not. Como won't like suspend them or do anything. You know what I mean? Because they not because they're one of the attractions of South America. World, yeah, they love Boca. Yeah, they're one of the attractions of the world. I mean, it's about, but this is a club that has done a lot of things that, that have given black eyes, and nothing kind of gets done. Right. You know what I mean? I mean, what and so red card there, red card for the VAR that led up to this. You know what I mean? Like, what are they even doing? You so friggin' yeah, red card to uh, come there both for sure. Yeah. Oh man. All uh, right, go ahead. Hit me. What you got? My fifty-fifty um, is uh, women's USA soccer. They got trounced this morning, three-zero by Sweden. Is this is this something they should be worried about? Are we tough? You know. The women's tournament is a little set up differently, 12 teams instead of 16. So uh, eight go through. But wh- how? what's the worried scale if you're USA women's into the Olympics right now? 3-0 to Sweden. <laughs> is, th- is there's a lose, right? Is there's a lose? Yeah. It's, it's, it's kind of like Mexico and Copa Oro. Like you took a team that's strong. You're expected to kind of win it. If you don't win it, the world's over. Um, I don't know. I think it just shows you the growth of soccer around the world. I think it doesn't help United States for them to play. Like they play Mexico twice to like, get ready. Like what the heck, what are you, what are you doing? Like playing teams that they could beat really easily um, playing other teams as well. Going on cop regions, easy for them to qualify in. You know, they took a very veteran team instead of allowing younger te- uh, younger players to get an opportunity at winning. So, you know, if you're going to try to beat teams on, on size and speed, I mean, Sweden is not the one you're going to do that with. So, um, yeah, I mean, I, I'm not, I was shocked. I woke up this morning. I didn't watch the game. I woke up this morning just to Google it. And I'm 44, like, 44 zero? games unbeaten before today. So, yeah. So, I mean, we're, this doesn't look good, you know, and it's, 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 this is kind of goes back to my dad was making that, you know, so I'm going to give a red card to team USA, um, for allowing that to happen. First of all, because you're supposed to win, uh, this is like team USA basketball, right? When they don't win, it's like, well, you should win. You know, you have, you have, you know, your USA, certain things, your USA. My dad was saying, like, this is why you don't send pros to that. Like, let, let these younger ones play. But obviously, soccer's hard for pros not to play because pros are so young. Um, but, yeah, red cards to Team USA, they should be worried. And they need to win this next game or it's uh, it's over. Yeah, um, tough a tough group. Australia, New Zealand, the other teams in the group, all World Cup teams. Um, 
you know, uh, you know uh, they'll take a cut. They'll take the two best second, third place teams. So that gives them an an, an advantage. Um, if they win one, they got to win more than one game. Yeah, they got to win one. Um, and tie. Yeah. I think for like I think for the women for the U.S. women they are in general so much farther ahead in the curve than in general the rest of the world when it comes to to, the, to soccer that almost um, they're number one, their level is much higher than every, than everybody else is. And the expect with that comes expectations. So the expectations of what you, you expect from them are much higher too. But what that also leads is, you know, you might be digressing little by little without you even knowing it because nothing has come because there's nothing that warns you about, about going down because you're just kind of always ahead in the head. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So this could be kind of a thing where, like you said, it's a very veteran group. Maybe they don't know that they should have been having younger players in before it's too late or before, if that makes sense. You know yeah, to I mean? make like, that, yeah, turn the page sooner. Yeah, they're not replenishing the they talent. They just love that, you know, rapping. No, they just love, like, they're just trying to squeeze one last one out of this, in this little group right here. So, and it almost kind of seems like, uh, you know, the way there's like boy cl boys clubs, this is the kind of seems like a girl club, a girls club kind of a thing. It has to be like, why, you know, if you're a young woman trying to play, you're probably thinking, I'm never going to get a chance. You know, like they're calling the same ones over and over. And one thing is World Cups, right? One thing is like those tournaments they have, you know, She Believes, whatever the tournament yeah, is called. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like Olympics should be something younger. It should be something younger, something like for the new group coming in. Well, be, when we talk about the women's games, though, you know, um, they have the World Cup and then they have the Olympics. There's no really other tournaments for, you know, the Euro in Europe, they have the Euros. They're just starting to have... Copa America, the idea of it, and uh, in Comabo. But for them, those are the two. So these are the really the only two opportunities they have, Olympics and the uh, World Cup, to have their best teams together and go against other teams in the world when it's not like an artificial tournament like the She Believes Cup where they're able to invite a couple. You know what I mean? So, you know, and because of that, and because like you, the, year and the, the year we have without COVID and the process of this, they haven't been able to test themselves in a in a while yeah, so now yeah. they don't know if they're if they have lost a step or two until now when they're about to play and australia is yeah, yeah. no joke sam kerr chelsea forward that's no joke australia is a good team australia could definitely get them and new zealand a step behind those teams but also a solid group in the in the women's game and so i still think they're favorites um but it'll be interesting seeing to see if this is just a warning shot or if this is something to the other teams can can get off of sweden because sweden outplayed them they their attack side was really nice their defensive structure was good as well this wasn't like you know an accident this was no a, all three goals were like off crosses right like all three goals, and you know and from the and from the, the whole flow of the game sweden was there ready to yeah, match yeah. Up i think play. it just shows you it just shows you the growth of the rest of the world like everyone's trying to catch up i'm telling you i, I really do always compare it to basketball with with men because I'm like, look, men's basketball, NBA players should win, right? Everyone thinks that, everyone knows that. But we know there's chemistry issues. They send guys that don't mix up. But you go play a whatever team, th these other countries are playing pro leagues now too, right? And they're taking it serious and they're paying players. And, you know, don't forget Luka Doncic was playing in Europe two years ago, you know, and all these guys have played in Europe. So, like, they're catching up. They're not going to get there. They're still you NBA and the men's basketball is still like miles ahead. But this kind of shows you the same thing where there is there's the lose, right? And if you do lose, everyone's like, bro, what the heck? Like, it, and this is kind of goes back to the U.S. league. I don't think U.S. has the strongest home league for women. I think Europe has some stronger leagues as far as like what they're doing with their teams. And we talked about the last episode where they piggyback it with the pro team, you know. So you know, we'll see. There's going to be some. They definitely had a little talk, you know. And I'll hopefully uh, they can turn it around. We'll see. Yeah, have, you know, they have to win. Yeah, I think you've definitely seen that, especially after the last World Cup. A lot of these elite clubs in Europe really putting an effort and Women's. allowing them to, you know, whether it's Chelsea or Arsenal or Bayern Munich or um, Wolfsburg, you know, Paris Saint Germain finally knocked off Lyon and France for the first time in 14 years. You know, so there is, and they're making their own culture for these elite teams, which is great. But you know. So, you know, Brazil, uh, Barcelona just went undefeated in uh, La Liga and a big part of this, that Spain team. So the rest of the world is catching up right now. They're just taking the model. It's, it's their, first of all, it's the world sport. 
they're taking the model they're using with the men's and they're going to run with it and they're going to catch up because the U.S. We have so many things going on here with the men's first division and the second and third over here. And then you got fourth over here. And then the women's have two leagues. Like there's no cohesion, right? You know what I mean? And so the rest of the world, yeah, they do only have one federation and one league, but they're like at least tying it together. You know what I mean? So that's going to help them. Yeah. So, we'll, uh, yeah. So, I mean, that's my 50 50 red card with you for the USA. It'll be interesting to see for them uh, how it goes on moving forward because there are definitely yep. some teams in this tournament that could knock them off and give them another, not only Sweden, but definitely you look at Holland, you look at Australia. Uh, Japan's definitely. always strong too, right? Japan's in the tournament. Yeah. yeah. Japan, uh, World Cup champions in 2013, finalists in 2007, or sorry, uh, 2011, finalists in 2015. So, home home field. So, we'll see. Yeah. So, we'll see. Definitely. You got another 50 50? Yeah, what do you, I mean, let's keep it soccer. What do you think, like, do you like that in the men's tournament, they allow three players over 23? Is that's, what, what was your thought on that? I mean, I like, guess. Like, is it needed? Is that needed? I mean. I mean, it's not needed because, um, you know, if anything, it's just a natural progression of the U-17 World Cup, the U-20 World Cup, and I got the, essentially, the U-23 World Cup. So I don't think it's needed, you know, uh, why they set it up this way, who knows, you know, the Olympics, has you know Olympics it's, it's you know we talk about FIFA being corrupt and having all these problems all the things you know the FIFA, Olympics are just as bad you know what I mean just oh, because we soccer every all day every day and it's around you know every year we get caught up on its hypocrisy and its you know shady deals Olympics every two years likes to come around and just remind you that they're just as hip, hypocritical they're just as shady they have no idea they're just as disorganized so why they do it I don't know okay well, it's a red, it's a red for me. Okay. Yeah. All right, man. Well, uh, I guess that wraps it up, right? Well, you got, I got one You got one more? Huh? Hit it. It's Olympics. Um, are there any um, Olympic event that you watch that you will become a master of, or you think you're like the freaking best judge of it after watching one day of it where you're like, I know exactly what I'm looking at. For example, for me, it's diving. I watch diving, and after one thing of diving, I'm like, "Oh, that's too much splash." You got the, you got the, you got the judges thing down. I yeah. never liked any of the, any of the ones with the judges. I don't watch. I, I don't understand them. I don't get them. Um, I do, I do like, I do swimming because I, I used to swim. Um, I do think I'm like, oh, he messed up, man. That was a slow turn. Oh, that's a bad, that's a bad start because the little things that I know. Track, I love to watch. I think I'm an expert on it. I never ran track before, but at least with swimming, I could see like, well, you know he's breathing too much or they picked his head up too much, whatever maybe the turn was slow. So I guess swimming would be the one that I watch. I feel like I'm an expert every four years. Yeah. Yeah. Mine's <laughs> diving. Yeah. Diving. Watch it. yeah. Too much. All you got to say is too much splash. Too much splash. Like, oh, that's, that's, that's the right. Man's I'm splash. amazed by every single diver there. I'm like, that's dope. Like, no. Oh, that synchronized diving when they're rolling at the same time, man. Or the one where, like they face, they're facing backwards and they still do the dive facing the board. Like that's ridiculous. Like you're going to hit your head, bro. It's crazy. Yeah, that's right. Well, <laughs> there you have, folks. We got some. We got a swimming expert and a diving expert with you on football theory. You know it. Uh, so that wraps it up this week, uh, Guti. A lot going on. There's gonna be a lot going on next week. We're just gonna keep on out here chugging along. Um, any final words? Um, you know, we're over a hundred downloads now. So I, I want to shout out everybody who's been uh, working with us. Let me run the number right now. But make sure you're following us on um, Instagram, football mm-hmm. underscore thir- uh, theory on twitter right we're very active on there personally as well you know all our links are there on the at the end of the episode notes and the biggest thing you know a lot of my friends hit me up they listen to it send us a little comment you know somewhere we'll read it you know the twitter whatever it may be you could like the show you could hate it just let us know how we are but yeah we're at a, a total of 110 downloads right now so we're, we're 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 chugging along like you said 110 downloads so hopefully by next time you know we hit the 150 mark maybe oh yeah thank you guys for listening tell your friends about it you know we appreciate it uh, thank you so much. Uh, Guti, I'm always uh, appreciative to you. You do such a good job on all the social media and everything, doing all the editing. You know, you're the, you're the man. You know, appreciate you. And you know, appreciate everybody else. Hug your loved ones. Love you guys. Thank you. All right. We're out. <laughs>